I've heard there was a secret chord That David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this The fourth, the fifth The minor fall The major lift The baffled king composing Hallelujah watching this video we love you so much we hope you love this song and all the songs on a pentatonix christmas you can get that album just look in the description box below and don't forget to subscribe <laughs> don't forget we love Very you nice. we love y'all
I think we're ready to start. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Pastor John Wegner from Marlton Assembly of God. This is my wife, Miriam, and we're here to be with you. Where's Michael? Where's Michael? Sorry. Here to be with you and family and friends. I think most everybody, I don't know, but um, we have a great hope and assurance in God who gives comfort and grace during this time. Um, I want to quote exactly what uh, Eva wanted to be done today. She goes, and I quote, I would like Pastor John Wagner of the Marlton Assembly of God to administer a prayer in my name for my love of God and Jesus, along with his thoughts and reflections of motherhood. So I'm going to try to do my best to honor her wishes. Um, but also there was a desire for um, a reading from the book of Ephesians in, in the New Testament of the Bible. But let's start with a word of prayer, and then we'll kind of work our way through. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've held off the rain, and we're here. And I pray, God, during all these crazy times with the coronavirus and all the challenges that are before us, during this challenging time, we could still put our faith and hope in you. And I pray by the comfort of your Holy Spirit, you come and give us your love and your mercy and your hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. So a reading from Ephesians chapter 5. Okay. So it's a privilege to be here today, Michael, and to honor Eve in any way that we can. She will be missed. And um, Michael asked that we read the scripture to honor her today. So Ephesians 5, 21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Why? Submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And just through my observation, Michael, I just want to commend you for loving your wife. Um, I had the privilege a couple weeks ago to go to your house, and you are just caring for your wife and nurturing her and, and loving her. I just want to commend you for that. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. Like I said before, there is hope. People have a question about eternal life or what happens when we pass away. In the book of John, the Gospel of John in the New Testament says, Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If that were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Jesus said that he was going to prepare a place for each one of us. For those who believe, who give their lives to Christ, who put their trust in the cross, that Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins, to give us life and eternal life. It's he who himself is preparing a place for us. And so the question is going to be, will we be reunited with the Lord together and will we see Eva again is my understanding that she loved the Lord she wanted people to know that she loved the Lord I quote again it's my my prayer for my love of God and for Jesus so if the Bible's true the Bible says that when we get to heaven he will wipe every tear from our eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away so how do you get to heaven? Jesus continued in John chapter 14. Matter of fact, Thomas or doubting Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How do we know how to get there? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you really knew me, you, knew, you know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. God loves people. And God loves everybody here. and He's provided a way for life, true life, and eternal life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus, that he loves you, he died on the cross for you, and he rose again, you too can have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. A lot of people are hopeless right now. They're down, discouraged, but God cares, and he comes to give life 
and he wants to give it to the fullness. In Psalm chapter 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. And it's personal. I shall not want. That's personal satisfaction. He makes me lie down, perfect rest. In green pastures, he nourishes our soul. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I always appreciate Eva. I remember in our church, Marlton Assembly of God, they would sit, you guys would sit about five rows back right on the aisle. And you were engaged. You liked the music. And I always like it when people like me, you know, as the pastor, you know. So Eva always made me feel good. And it, I think she loved the Lord. There's, some, there's a joy that God gives that the world can't take away. Now in the fullness of life, Eva's in heaven. Her body is made new. She's with the Lord. And I, I believe God wants all of us to go to heaven. It's his will. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you'll give your life to Christ, he'll, he'll forgive you of your sins and give you life and eternal life. She also asked about uh, a statement about moms. And so I want to read this called Super Mom. Mom, you're a wonderful mother, so gentle, yet so strong. The many ways you show your care always make me feel I belong. You're patient when I'm foolish. You give guidance when I ask. It seems you can do most anything. You're the master of every task. You're a dependable source of comfort. You're my cushion when I fall. You help in times of trouble. You sum support me whenever I call. I love you more than you know. You have my total respect. If I had my choice of mothers, you'd be the one I'd select. Mothers are important. Eva's life is important. Michael, we're here to support you and to love you and give you comfort, and not just for today, but there's gonna be anniversaries and birthdays. There's gonna be memories that kind of flood our hearts and lives, and we stand with you. Marlton Assembly of God, or I do. You have my cell phone number. You can call me and bring encouragement. But I know that uh, being a parent, we have three daughters. And my, my youngest daughter went to get her hair cut this past week and they cut it too short. Oh, the drama that we had in our house. But uh, I just saw how my wife just kind of nurtured her, nurtured her, put her in a bun, got going in life. Life's real, life's hard sometimes, but God's good. I heard this statement, life is hard, but God is good. Don't confuse the two. Some people think when life's tough, that God's not good. Life is tough, life is a challenge, but there's a good God in heaven that meets us at the place where we are. And my hope and prayer is that everyone who hears my voice and we're, and we're here with reality, that you would know that there's a God in heaven who loves you. I don't know what your upbringing was, I don't know what steps you walked in, but God loves you and cares about you and there's hope. And that's the message today, that there's hope that's found in Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. When he went to Lazarus' tomb, the Bible says Jesus wept, but then he gave him new life. And that's the hope that we have. Even in a moment like this, there's life and eternal life. This is just temporary. This world is temporary, but our hope is in Jesus Christ. So I hope those words give you some encouragement and that you would put your faith in the Lord. I'm not here to kind of preach at you, but just give you an opportunity. Life is real and there are challenges. And there is sin and there is death, but Jesus came to take away sin and he wants us to give us life and life, eternal life. So let me pray for you. Don't mean to embarrass you, but if anyone wants prayer, uh, I'm just gonna ask that maybe you would bow your head with me. And if you wanna ask Jesus to come into your life, you recognize that you're a sinner and you're separated from God, you say, Lord, I wanna know you. I wanna be close to you. I wanna enjoy you. And I want the assurance that when I die, that I would be with the Lord forever. I want to tell you right now, God is going after your heart and your soul. He loves you. He cares about you. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we stand here and we remember and we read scripture. But more than anything else, we know that you're a God of love and grace and forgiveness. You said in the scriptures, for God so loved the world that you gave your one and only son to whoever would believe in you and not perish but have eternal life. Lord God, I pray right now that a moment of decision and choice, that many people will be open, their hearts will be open to receive the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God 
that raises people from the dead and gives hope. Lord, I pray, God, right now in Jesus' name that you would give people encouragement in their soul. No one's looking around. Maybe you're praying, but you say, Pastor, I want to ask Jesus Christ to come into my life as my Savior. I want to give him my heart. I want to start following the Lord. And today's your day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. It's a day of hope. It's a day of grace, forgiveness. You want to get your life right with God and you want to spend eternity with God. And in a difficult, challenging day of COVID-19, 2020, at a funeral, today's the day you get your heart right with God. You say, Jesus, I accept your forgiveness. I accept your grace and I'll follow you. Is there anybody here? You just kind of wave at me and say, I need the Lord to come into my heart, come into my life. Is there anyone else? You say, that's me. I need the Lord. He's already there. Good. Amen. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Just give you an opportunity. Anybody else? You say, that's me. I want to ask the Lord to come into my life. I think there was two or three people that just kind of lifted your hand. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge your love, what you did for us on the cross, and you rose again. The people right here that are asking you to come into our hearts, I pray that our heart would be open and God, that resurrection love of God would come into their hearts and they'd be changed forever. Let their commitment be true. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everyone. I know it's awkward to meet people for the first time like this, but Michael, I hope I honored you and your wife and the day. We love you, we stand with you, and we're there for you. Thank you. Originally, I wasn't going to speak, but I had to. It was just it was 20 years ago. Even I bet. One of the first things they asked me to do was go to church. Well, that sealed our relationship to the House and Assembly of God. We had the same Christian Judeo beliefs. And it's the glue that held us together all these years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure what else to say. You know, Pastor John, you've been, you and your family and the church family have been a huge, huge influence on our lives. Something else I like to say. If there's an angel walking on earth, it's this lady right here. She was by my side seven days a week at our home, hmm. helping me with Eva. What she did for me, I just don't have the words to do it for So I'm going to thank you so much. John, as time started to get really tough, I felt myself weakening. John would give me phone calls, text me. He would come over and visit, and sit down on the couch in the living room and talk with me. I started to get my strength back. Mm. It gave me back my backbone. I appreciate it. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the services here, and we'll let you return to your cars when you're ready.
years old. This is the day before she moved to the United States. Hmm. I could have gotten a more recent photograph, but this just seemed appropriate because it's one that people love the most. Thank you all for coming out. I really do appreciate it. Each and every one of you. I really do appreciate it. And I know Uber does as well. We love you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you on the, on the flip side, honey. Let us hold on that.